Welcome everyone to the Recast City webinar, The Cavalry Isn't Coming. Three secrets to boost your economy and create a thriving place now. And I say now for a very specific reason, because every single one of you I know is in a role where you are pulled in 30,000 different directions. You're all trying to make the most amazing thing happen in your community and you need answers now. You need shortcuts, you need tried and true answers. And we're gonna talk about that today. So what I'm gonna do is get us started on our slides. And we're gonna first talk today about, hmm, we're gonna first talk today about welcome, uh, which we just did. But also, I just just to start off with, um, want to make sure that we're all in the right place. This webinar is really for people who are in the local government, in real estate, nonprofit, and in small business, but you all are serving as local leaders with decision-making power to act and implement because the responsibility is about implementation. Um, and if you'd like to share in the chat what role you serve in your community, you're going to see some questions pop up from Carla. Carla is uh, my amazing helper on this webinar, and she's going to both do any logistics problems you have, but also she's going to pose some questions for us along the way to keep our discussion going. So I'm sure many of you wear many, many hats, um, and I know that you're all working really hard in what you're doing. We have people in economic development, in real estate, uh, CDFI. Great to see each and every one of you involved in this town manager and community economic development director. Uh, it is a key place to be sitting in terms of it and a Main Street manager. Thank you all for joining me today. But I have to start with bad news. And, and, and I know it's a hard place to start when we start with bad news. Because what we're seeing is that 80% of all counties in the country are seeing a decline in working age adult population. 80%. I don't know if you are seeing this in your community, but we're certainly seeing this across the country. We're also seeing, and I'm sure you've all seen these headlines, that in income inequality is the highest it's ever been. And we have some really serious problems of how this, these disparities and this drain are impacting our communities. We have tons of vacant buildings all over the country. And we know that vacant buildings have an enormous impact on property values. And we need a different model. It is, it's beyond time that we need a different model is the truth. Right? We need a model, one that's both economic development and place-based, real estate-based, business development and real estate that helps us build a strong, inclusive Main Street or downtown or old neighborhood corridor, you pick, and get your community back. And that's what we're going to talk about today. But first, I want to tell you a little bit about myself. I thought you'd like the picture on the left. It's me in the 80s when I had short hair before I had the big poofy 80s hair. Um, I grew up mostly in the DC area and my mother was a maker. That blue, amazingly blue, bright, bright blue dress, um, my mother sewed for me. I think she had to redo the bodice at least six or seven times before she was happy with it and I loved it. She sewed me that dress, she made quilts, she painted. She also taught me how to hang uh, blinds, uh, measure three times, make sure you know how to use the drill. She taught me that I could really build or make whatever I set my mind to. And I applied that into the world of city planning. So I've been in the world of city planning for over 20 years, for those of you who don't know me. And uh, my passion is about making great places, so much so that a few years ago, I had a chance to give a TEDx talk all about the economic power of great places, because there is great economic power 
when we invest in places. Five years ago, I launched Recast City. Out of all of my work on housing and transportation and community redevelopment and how we reinvest in a place. And I launched Recast City to be able to help communities, help business leaders, help real estate developers, help local leaders rebuild their economy and rebuild their place at the same time by working with small scale manufacturing businesses. And it's been an amazing, amazing journey of working with business owners and local leaders and helping people implement this outcome. I've had a chance to travel across the country and work on site with community leaders all over the place, coming from places that have hot markets, places that are struggling to get new development for the first time in a long time, places that have been emptied out over the years and places that people believe in again or wanna believe in again. But the struggle is real. And I say this because we are stuck in a default model that honestly just doesn't work for most places if it works for any place. We're stuck in a model where economic development is something that we've done for everywhere. We've made it look like anywhere. We're stuck in a model from the 80s. And we've created this default model where people and places are being left behind because tech is king right now. And then we decided that once a real estate model works, we keep building the same thing over and over and over again until everywhere looks exactly the same. And honestly, this is the economic model that most communities are pursuing, even if they're not naming it this way. I'm sure none of you are doing this, but this is what's more or less being taught still all over the country in terms of how we create economic opportunity. Well, not economic opportunity, it's called economic development, because somehow everyone decided that every place is the same, right? If this worked over here, it's going to work for you, even if that place is 2 million people and you're 25,000 people. But honestly, we all know that that's not the case. We need to ditch this default model. And this is what we're going to talk about today. We need to ditch this default model. And I'm going to tell you about why this default model is really really just screwing every place out there. We need to invest in a better way. I'm going to talk about that a little bit. And then we need to really think about how do we do this differently. So I'm going to take you through five steps to a strong economy in a thriving place. And I promise the three secrets that I talked about. So here's the, here's the question. Do you still have a development going on in your community that's like the economic development model of the 80s? What is that? What does that look like? And what you're going to get if you stay all the way through me to the end, till, till the end, I'm going to tell you about the new Recast City Masterclass and this bonus opportunity to get one-on-one -on -one time. So we're going to talk through that today too. But first, we're going to talk about the economic development model from the 80s. And I'm glad to see that people are also thinking ahead, right? We're stuck in the 80s. We're stuck in the 80s with our economic development strategy. Um, you may not have a big hairband anymore, um, but we know that a lot of the economic development decision-making is happening that way. We know this because there are a lot of cities that are still pursuing big business as king. We have communities that are looking at how do I recruit big businesses? How do we just give away tons of tax incentives to be able to recruit some new business, big business, that's going to save all of our questions or save all of us? Somebody from outside is going to come in, we're going to give them tons of tax breaks, and they're going to save us. When in reality, it's not the way it works. What we're doing is we're trading away our recruitment through this, or we're trading away our future through this recruitment model. We're giving dollars, and in many cases, we're not getting anything back. And in many cases, we're, communities are only giving incentives for high-income jobs. Somehow, honestly, I'm not really sure when it became the dominant model, but it's definitely over the last 20 years, all these economic development programs decided that they were only going to give 
incentives to businesses that were bringing in high income jobs. And everybody forgot to pay attention to everybody else who's out there that might have a middle income job or an entry level job where we know we need an entire pipeline of jobs in our community. So we know that we're, we're stuck in the 80s in terms of our economic development model in a lot of, in a lot of communities. We also know that people and places are being left behind because tech is king in a lot of places. So people and places are really being left behind. This kind of empty old industrial building is all over the country. And in some places, we're seeing that the only investment that's happening is venture capital going to big tech businesses because everyone is chasing the next unicorn. Well, the reality is, is that we have other money that's also going just to places that are shovel ready. The whole world of opportunity zones, right? I don't know how much you've been seeing the press around it, but in many cases, it's only going to shovel ready projects that were going to be built anyway, and are just giving tax breaks on the hot markets that were going to happen anyway. And then, no question, we also have an enormous income gap going on across our country. So much so that studies are showing that white households have six and a half times the wealth of black households. And it's because of unequal, unequal income, not just the historic injust, in, injustices that have, been, that have happened. And so that means that when we look at our economic development, we need to look at not just creating jobs, but we need to be looking at creating better paying jobs for more people. And I wanna know if you've seen any of these challenges in your community. Is there one that you're most worried about? Because we also have the same problems from the real estate perspective, right? We know that real estate value drops when every place looks the same. We did this when we did sprawl. You can find a set of strip malls that all look the same, but we we're also doing it with mixed use where mixed use development ends up looking the same anywhere we go. The same coffee shop, the same juice bar, the same gym, whatever it is, it goes in and then it loses value because it looks completely like everywhere else. And the other problem is that we created a huge pressure to create retail. First, we did it in malls and we have spread malls all over the country. And then we spread it in mixed use and we said, well, every mixed use has to have retail on the ground floor, which when we had it in specific locations made a lot of sense, but we spread it like peanut butter. And so all of a sudden we have this really expensive peanut butter, I call it expensive peanut butter, because we have retail all over the place that's expensive to build because construction costs are high, so local businesses can't afford it because you can't even cover the construction costs. So then we have this push and pull of new retail, old retail, spread like peanut butter, and no one's thinking about where we need what, that detailed building of place. And on top of that, we have an approval process that keeps getting longer, right? Every development, more time, more money, more push, um, and, and not always, and most of the time, not enough community engagement around it. We know that investment and growth and change can do good for our communities, right? We know when a community has struggled for a long time that it needs investment, but it needs it done with intention and purpose. And you're going to hear me talk about intention and purpose a lot because I think that's the major difference between when we take an idea and we spread it like peanut butter or we replicate it everywhere versus when we really think about what is unique about a place and what does it specifically need. And those are very, very different ways of going about it. So I don't know about you, but I, don't, I see a lot of communities that have struggled with many of these different challenges. Um, I would love to hear from you in the chat if there's one of these challenges that's really what you're struggling in. Uh, one person wrote, you're worried about retaining talent in your community, you have issues with the lack of qualified workers. What are the other major issues that you guys are facing when you look at 
how you want your economy to grow, and how you want your place to be improved on. Commute are a huge issue. Um, and also people being unclear about industry versus what it really can look like within a community. And obviously zoning absolutely can be a, a huge challenge around that as well. So we need a new path forward. And this is what we're gonna talk about today. We need a new path forward that really allows people, allows us to invest in people who live there. Allows us to invest in a place with those people. And allows us to create a new structure to support scale and invest in it. That's both the people, the businesses, I guess not both, people, businesses, and the place, right? Because business development has to be a part of the solution, especially where we have empty buildings um, and not enough business activity. And the truth is we do need to think long term, but we need to act now. And I come from a city planning background and I've done the long-term master plans and they have a role and the, the comprehensive economic development strategy has a role, but too many times in our communities, we do the big long-term plan and we never think about what do we do now? Like in the next three months, what are we implementing? What can we change in the next nine months? And really thinking in detail and acting in detail about those short-term actions. So there's three major things I wanna make sure you're aware of. And these are the big things for us to think about. The three secrets to the new economic reality. Place is key to economic strength. Unique is key to economic longevity. And social connections are key to economic resilience. I just wanna repeat these for a second because most of the time when we talk about Main Street redevelopment, downtown reinvestment, economic development programs, we don't think about these three. We think about clusters, we think about business, business development programming, we think about recruitment, and we don't talk about these three. And I wanna be really clear about the role of them and the potential of these to really work with you with small scale manufacturing businesses because they are one of the key ways we get to these outcomes. So place is key for economic strength, unique is key for economic longevity, and social connections are key to economic resilience. And I talk about the small scale manufacturing businesses because they're really a missing piece. And they're in every community. I've been in communities of every different shape and size from one or 2,000 people up to millions of people in a community. These are a missing piece in our solutions. They're, I call them the hidden gems in our community. Small scale manufacturing businesses, I define as any business that is creating a tangible good. Let's leave it at that. If you make something that you can pick up and hold, that you can replicate or package, that is small scale manufacturing. You could be one person, you could be 50 people, but it's small scale manufacturing because it fits within the buildings of our neighborhood, right? It creates all sorts of benefits. It gives us a reason to gather. People are incredibly proud of seeing the people and meeting the people who make things in their community. It allows us a new way to build an inclusive community of business owners. Doesn't matter if it's immigrant population, a community that hasn't been part of the business ownership community in the past, being able to make something, being creative and creating a product is something that many people have as a natural talent. And so then the question is, how do we teach them how to be a business? Well, that's something that we can teach anyone and everyone who has that skill of creating the product. But these businesses also allow us to fill storefronts. And I know a lot of you have storefronts that need to be filled. Main Street, downtown, neighborhood, historic neighborhood corridors that were your commercial center. 
These businesses fill storefronts because they can do production and sell their product in the same space. This woman has a wonderful soap business and just to her left off of this picture, um, she had this huge cauldron that she mixed the soaps in so she could do the work and sell at the retail store at the same time, which reduced her costs of running a space because she didn't need production staff and retail staff. She could do it both or staff could do it both. We also know that small scale manufacturing helps to increase property value. So when we are looking to bring investment into an area, but we know that we wanna do it in our own unique and local way, having product businesses along our main street or along the, the corridor really helps increase property values because they can sell online, they can sell wholesale, but they can also draw foot traffic if they do have their retail frontage. Zeke's is a coffee producer. They have a coffee shop up front and they have a roaster up back and the whole regional shipping goes out the back door. And this helps attract people to the street and in fact has brought in a whole bunch of new businesses along this block. But we also know that it allows us to attract more business owners. Knoxville, Tennessee is a great example of this. I had a, the pleasure of working with Knoxville two years ago. Um, one of the great connections that we did was we helped connect the entrepreneurship center with the Urban League so that the outreach and engagement that they were doing around small scale manufacturing and maker businesses could be more inclusive and really partner with the Urban League on that outreach. But the other thing that we, they did since then is they've created this amazing online directory of all the small scale manufacturers. And what it's, one of the things it's doing is attracting more business owners to the area so that they can grow their entrepreneurs and they can grow their community of small scale manufacturers. Now I just wanna very briefly show you who these businesses are, just to make sure you have the same language around it. There is something called a maker space. A maker space is a public space. It is for education purposes and for small businesses who want access generally to tools that are more expensive than what anybody can own at home. Um, there are usually tons of classes and programming that come out of these spaces. Um, most of the time they're successful when they're nonprofits. There are in fact very few uh, for-profit ma maker spaces that are successful. Um, a lot of times they're getting included into libraries and into other public investments because they are providing a public good. Then we have shared kitchens or shared wood shops spaces that are only for small businesses that are producing in a specific vertical. Um, so a, a shared commercial kitchen, we see those popping up in a lot of parts of the country so that people can have the commercial kitchen health stamp of approval and then be able to sell their products more broadly. We also have artisan businesses or maker businesses that are generally one to five people. They're doing most of their work by hand still and these businesses are selling in many different ways. They're selling on-site, online, and hopefully wholesale as well as they grow. And then we have folks that are scaling from prototyping to small batch. Just to be clear, small scale manufacturing also includes technology businesses. So anybody who's doing hot sauce, handbags, or hardware are all part of small scale manufacturing. And then we have things that are production at scale, um, they fit into the bu buildings. It might be a, an area that was industrial, like this was an old brewery district in Cincinnati. So the brewery, a new brewery has taken over the old brewery space, which is obviously really big, um, but also is becoming, has become a place to gather, really a, a community center point. So what does all of this mean for our local economy? Really great question. I wanna talk you through one project that I recently worked on. There are so many different stories to tell of amazing places, but I'm gonna just tell you one of them today. So this is the Business Loop in Columbia, Missouri. The Business Loop is a, a community improvement district and it has members of all of the property owners along this mile and a half corridor. And you can see it, um, this is just a, a Google you know, street view of it. And it is tons of parking lots, tons of gaps between buildings. But it used to be where families would come to have dinner. It used to be really a center point 
for the community. And the challenge that was posed to us uh, and in our work with The Loop is to figure out how to make that happen again. They have a downtown, but the down, downtown is mostly used by the college students. And the families in the community really said, we want a place to go. We want a place that's ours. And the business community said, we really want a place to have to do commerce that's ours, that, but that's close in, because this is right near downtown. And what we did is we went and worked with the loop uh, through a four month process, worked with them to find small scale manufacturing businesses in the community, find connectors who could help us connect with businesses owned by people from many different populations in the community went on site and worked with all of these people. This was an amazing public meeting uh, that they held that we spoke at. And what we did is we, we talked and we listened. We asked a lot of questions. And we met with small scale manufacturing business owners uh, from all different parts of the community to understand what was working and what wasn't working about having a small scale manufacturing business in the city. So we would understand from a business development their needs. And then we also looked at things like zoning um, and development policy uh, and all of the technical stuff about what would happen to if we wanted to encourage people to build along the loop corridor. And what we found was that there was an amazing opportunity there. There was an amazing opportunity for people to make something happen. And we had the, the great opportunity to work with, with Carrie Gartner, who is the executive director of The Loop. And what we did is, is we really dug deep with them. Um, and we really, honestly, anytime we work with somebody, anytime I work with somebody, I really work with them as a partner. Um, because you know your community best, um, and I can just keep pushing you in the direction that I know you need to go uh, and help you be super intentional about the way you get there. But at the end of the day, it's going to be your relationships and your connections in the community that we can help you build so that you own those connections after we're gone. So we created a, a report for them. Um, and then we also did an additional two months of not on site work, but remote coaching and partnering and additional research to help them get to this point. And what point was that is that by the nine months from when we made our first recommendations to the community, they're gonna launch a commercial shared kitchen, which might be the fastest turnaround that I've ever seen anybody do it, which is pretty amazing. But what they also said is that they now have the relationships and the connections with different people in the community so that not only do people know what they're looking at when they look at the vision of the loop and the potential that's, that's there and people are excited for it, but they also have public sector partners who are willing to put money in because they see that vision now. And they also know exactly the steps that they want to go through to get there now, right? So that it's going to have a strong, thriving economy and a strong, thriving place. Now, this project was a big project. It was actually two projects. It was a four month project uh, with them that included an on site visit. And then it was an additional two months of a boost, it's called a recast boost, um, which is one-on-one -on -one coaching with the community on implementation only, plus some more research uh, about models to implement. And I know that not every community can afford this. And that's the reality of what's going on in community development. But I wanna help more communities make something happen. I really do. I wanna make the tools and the resources available to more places faster. Because we know what we get on the other side. We know that we can help bring back Main Street, right? Bringing Main Street back to life is a top priority for me wherever I go. It doesn't matter if Main Street is in a neighborhood or is the epicenter or the old epicenter of the entire community. We also know that we need to grow local businesses with living wage jobs. It has to be a priority for us. And then we know we can create a loved and thriving community. I do believe that everyone deserves to live in a place that feels loved and where they feel like their contribution is valued in the community. So my question, I guess, is are you done with the default model? I don't 
maybe you are comfortable in that space, um, but I'm gonna guess that you're here because you're not. Are you ready to invest in Main Street and create a valued place? Do you wanna find out what is unique about your community and truly showcase it? And are you ready to connect with new people and business owners to build a lasting economy? Because not everyone is ready to connect with new people. And this might sound crazy, but I have met plenty of people in our field who say, okay, I'll have the, the public event and we'll see who comes. And my answer always is, no, we have to go out to people and actually figure out what they need are, what they need and where they are. So the question then is, if you're ready, then I, <laughs> you're hearing my dog in the background right now, having a bad dream. That's the barking you hear. Sorry, everyone. Just shows you how the dog is a great, great asset for everything, except for when you're doing a live webinar. <laughs> so the question then is, are you ready for that change? And if you are ready, I wanna invite you to join a tight-knit circle of community development leaders from across the country to learn with other Main Street and downtown fanatics, because that's truly what we are if we're doing this. People who believe in local small businesses, people who believe in small scale manufacturing and the power of what our neighbors can do, and people who believe in the, the place, in the uniqueness of the place that we can make in our community. And people who wanna make change happen now. I'm really looking for people who are rather impatient to make something happen now. So I'm um, launching a Recast City Masterclass. And this is based off of a masterclass that is in fact going on with uh, the new Etsy maker cities that just got announced yesterday. So I'm providing a masterclass to the Etsy maker cities, five communities, one grants from Etsy and MasterCard. And I'm running a masterclass for that crew based on all sorts of stuff. This is the same masterclass that that group is gonna to go to. And I'm, I'm opening up a separate group to you guys. And in this masterclass, you're gonna get five, five, five main things out of the masterclass. You're gonna learn step-by-step step how to find the right local businesses for Main Street or downtown. We'll show you how to build a stronger, more resilient and inclusive business community. We'll help you find out how to bring small scale manufacturing businesses into the limelight to achieve these outcomes. And we're gonna help you increase buy-in about bringing Main Street back to life and grow property values, as well as getting coached on successful redevelopment and business development techniques. And this last one, I wanna just emphasize for a second because every single person I have ever worked with in local community work knows a ton. You all know so much about your community and even tons of best practices out there. And a lot of time, the biggest barrier is not enough hours in the day and not, not knowing what to prioritize when. And so this coaching is really focused on people in local leadership implementing economic development and community development and real estate development initiatives to so that we can help you get to the implementation and the action and the wins faster but also fill in the gaps so that there are if there are specific tools or specific models from different parts of the country that fill your needs we will hand those directly to you no need to chase them down like i said this is for local leaders ready to act. You might be from local government, from the nonprofit sector, or from real estate. And you know that doing the same old thing will not change anything in your community. And you're ready to act now. So this masterclass is going to have eight live sessions over Zoom. It's going to have custom Recast City tools and worksheets that you'll get every single session to work on with the team on the Zoom call, but also in your community in between calls, with proven techniques that are from all 25 years of my career um, that has worked in communities of all different shapes and sizes, because it's really about tools that you're gonna put your own mark on. You're gonna be part of a learning cohort, because I think there is so much that you can learn from other people in this field when you're in a small group. 
We're gonna hand you the best of models for whatever challenge you're facing. It might be part of your business development pipeline for small businesses, including small scale manufacturing. It might be challenges about redevelopment and reinvestment on Main Street and people who are sitting on properties that we need to figure out how to get a hold of and do, make some changes around. And it will include weekly guidance and coaching. And there will only be eight spots in the group because I wanna make sure that I can provide one-on-one -on -one help to every single person who participates in this. Now, today, I am offering this at, on the webinar only for webinar participants at a discounted price for these eight spots. After the webinar, the price is gonna go up and you can see more about this on our website, but only for you, for webinar participants, I'm offering it at $15.99. And I wanted to keep this price manageable because I want to make sure that this is inclusive of every community leader who we have on this call. And for those of you who are on this webinar today, it's also going to include a free bonus one on one kickoff call. And that's just going to be me with you and anybody else on your team in your community to really dive into what are the challenges you're facing and where do you want to go and get you into a deep dive on that topic before we even start the series of, of uh, group calls so that you have all of that homework done with the community members that you need at that, at that table. Now you can apply right now. This is live. It hasn't been promoted online yet at all. You guys are the first ones to see this link. And this is the code you can use, three secrets, to be able to join this master class. Because the, the truth is, we're all doing this because we want to create places that feel loved, right? We want to create places that feel valued. And honestly, we want our neighbors who have jobs making things to know that they are valued. This is a community of, of business owners that have been sidelined for a very long time. Doesn't matter if they're a new business just in the last five or 10 years, or if they're a legacy business that's been around three or four generations. Most product businesses think that, uh, that this is just not something that anyone cares about. And even just being able to go to them and say, we care about what you're doing, tell us what you need, this is going to be an important step for them because we can create places that are high value and we can create jobs that pay more people living wages. So again, I wanna be clear, the masterclass is for eight individuals. Uh, if a community wants eight people on it, then you have to sign up and pay for eight people. Um, generally, we need to, we would expect it to be eight different communities, but if two people from your community or three people from your community want to join it together, that's fine too. So eight people, and honestly, it will be the first eight people that apply online are going to get these spots and they will fill up fast because I've been talking to people about this this last week and there are a lot of people ready to go. So you're going to get the step-by-step -step for businesses for Main Street, we're gonna show you how to build a stronger, more resilient and inclusive business community. You're gonna find out how to bring small scale manufacturing businesses into the limelight to achieve these outcomes. And I cannot, I want you to make sure you know that small scale manufacturing is a part of the solution. This is not some generic thing about any place. This is about your businesses in your community. And this is about making sure people can increase their confidence about bringing Main Street back to life and that you will grow property values. They will increase, but we wanna do it in a way that also respects the locally owned businesses that are there and that you're gonna to attract to that place. We don't wanna create an, uh, an event of displacement. Commercial displacement is not where we're going. We're looking at how do we value these businesses? How do we create space for them? And then how do we keep them there? We plan for wild success on your corridor from the very start. And the coaching that we can provide you with about successful redevelopment and business development techniques will fill in those gaps for you as you go. So, like I said, you can apply today at this website. Please make sure you go to it, recastcity.com 
slash masterclass. There are only eight spots. And the only way that you will get the discount is by using the code at checkout for that says three secrets. When you get to the checkout page for it, it will ask you for a code and you put in three secrets, all capital letters like you see here. Because really it's about making an amazing place. This is something that every community can do. Knoxville's been doing it for a couple of years now. Columbia, Missouri is now all in on it. We worked with Fremont, California and Hoboken, New Jersey, and we worked with USC, Washington, uh, and we've worked with, um, let's see, where else have we been? Cincinnati, Ohio. The people are doing this all over the country and it's because people believe in creating new opportunity. People believe that we need to do something different. We need to chart out a new path. We need to drop the default model and we need to really make a difference in how communities are made. And the honest truth is we do this because we wanna make great places that people are proud to call home. So with that, we are wrapped up for today. And we'll leave this slide up so that you guys can make sure to pull it down. And you can feel free to reach out to me afterwards by email. I'll put my email address up again. You can just reach out to me directly by email and we can set up a time uh, to talk if you have any other questions. But like I said, this, these eight spots are gonna go fast and I would like them to be yours. This is not gonna go out to the rest of the world until early next week. So please act as soon as you can and sign up for the Small Scale Manufacturing Recast City Masterclass. I can't wait to work with you and to create this new model with you today. And I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful fall day. Thank you very much. Have a great day.